Enjoying the holiday season and all its festivities? Are you enjoying the decorations that are everywhere and the lights that are on houses and the decorated mantles and listening to your favorite Christmas music and singing along and doing your own decorating? Or are you totally overwhelmed and <laughs> exhausted and frustrated and stressed out with all the to-dos? There's a, a saying that I read last year that I really loved, and it says, there are some people who want to throw their arms around you simply because it's Christmas. There are other people who want to strangle you simply because it's Christmas. <laughs> this week, I've been the strangling type. So I actually wrote this talk for myself today because I needed to hear it. I have been so stressed out this week because I have had so much to do, all of my regular duties and my regular work, and then really wanting to and needing to get ready for Christmas on top of it. And with all of that, it has made me stressed out. And so we bought a Christmas tree this week, which I'm really excited about, and washed it off in the backyard and got it in the house. And I put my wreath on my door, and we decorated the front porch and have this cutest deer that's like this tall. And the poinsettia is on the porch, and it looks so cute. And the tree is still naked, and that's going to happen at some point along the way. <laughs> and I've gone shopping, and I bought a few presents, but I've been having a really hard time buying presents because I can't find the right present for that person. That's because, mostly, I don't know what the right present is, so it makes it really hard. But you know what? Deep down inside, what I really want to do and what I really want to have is a season that is filled with joy. What I really want is a season that is filled with the people that I love and that I cherish and that are close to my heart. What I really want is to have a really deeply meaningful and rich and satisfying holiday season. How about you? Is that what you really want to have also? But what happens is when we get so busy with all those things that we have to do, especially when we get caught up in the shoulds, what our culture that we live in tells us that we should be doing and what we need to be doing this during this holiday season is we end up feeling entirely overwhelmed. We end up feeling stressed out and then it's no fun at all. Then it just seems like the holidays become a to-do and become a burden instead of a celebration. The Grinch says... What if Christmas doesn't come from a store? Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. Absolutely. And so what if you and what if I took this American tradition of this Christmas season that we have and what if we made it less about doing and more about being? What if we took this holiday season and what our culture tells us that we should do and instead made it more about what makes our hearts happy and what makes our spirits happy? We went out Friday night and walked around Naples and looked at the Christmas lights and it was so much fun and went out to dinner with my best friend and her partner, so I got to spend time with people that I love and adore. That is part of like celebrating what feels good at this holiday season. And so what if you made it more about those things and listening to your favorite Christmas music and singing and driving around and looking at the Christmas lights and baking your favorite cookies, whatever the things are that make your heart happy and that make your spirit happy. What if you and I made this holiday season less about giving someone or buying or finding the perfect gift, and instead you shared the gift of yourself and the gift of your love and the gift of your light, the gift of your own unique loving person. What if it was more about that than about a material gift? that unique and beautiful gift that you are in those people's lives that love you and adore you and that you love and adore. 
What if we truly let that be what was important this holiday season instead of the physical gift? What if we made that sharing of ourselves and our heart and our light and our love the thing that was really valuable? Because in reality, you know what? That is the only important gift that there is. In reality, that is what those people that love you really find valuable. The truth is, nobody cares about that little gift you're going to give them. What they care about is your heart and you being in their life and the love that you share between the two of you. Mother Teresa said, it's not how much we give, but how much love we put into the giving. And so the title of my talk today is My Gift to You. So what if my gift to you was my light and my love? What if your gift to those people in your life that you love and adore was your light and your love and your being present with them in that connection? Would it be enough? Would it be enough if my gift to you was my light and my love? I think everybody will say yes. Could it be enough if that's what your focus really were and what your holidays were about? Would the holidays, if you did that, be more satisfying? Would they be more fulfilling? Would they feel more peaceful? If that was really where your intention and your focus was, would it feel deeper and more meaningful? And you know what? I'm not saying don't go buy presents. And I'm not saying don't wrap them in pretty packages. But what I know is what we focus on is the experience we have. Because our focus creates the experience that we have. So if I am focused on the shoulds and the oughts and what society tells me that I should be doing, I end up feeling drained and depleted and crabby. <laughs> I was crabby this week. If instead I am inner directed by my heart and by my spirit and by what's important to my heart and my spirit, when I'm directed by my own divine nature that is love and that is joy and let that be the thing that guides me, then what I end up doing is the things that are satisfying and the things that are fulfilling and the things that feel good to me and the things that are absolutely the most satisfying then to the other people in my life. I end up feeling fulfilled when I do that. And what, when we feed ourselves and nurture ourselves like that, in turn, other people get fed also. And so there's a story that I read, a Christmas story this week, and it goes like this. My husband, Mike, hated Christmas. Oh, not the true meaning of Christmas, but the commercial aspect of it. Overspending, the frantic rushing around, the last minute gift for Uncle Harry, the dusting powder for Grandma, the gifts given and received in desperation because nothing else could be thought of or nothing else was needed. Knowing he felt this way, I decided one year to bypass the usual shirts, sweaters, ties, so forth. I reached for something special for Mike. The inspiration came in an unusual way. Our son Kevin, who was 12 that year, was wrestling at the junior level at the school that he attended. Shortly before Christmas, there was a non-league match against a team sponsored by an inner city church. These, youngster dre these youngsters dressed in sneakers so ragged that shoe st strings seemed to be the only thing holding them together presented a sharp contrast to our boys in their spiffy blue and gold uniforms and sparkling new wrestling shoes. As the match began, I was alarmed to see that the other team was wrestling without headgear, the kind of light helmet designed to protect a wrestler's ears. It was a luxury the other team obviously could not afford. Well, we ended up walloping them. 
we took every weight class. And each of the boys, each of their boys, as they got from the mat, they swaggered around with false bravado, a kind of street pride that couldn't acknowledge defeat. Mike, sitting beside me, shook his head sadly. I wish one of them could have won, he said. They have a lot of potential, and losing like that could take the heart right out of them. Mike loved kids, all kids, and he knew them, having coached Little League football and baseball and lacrosse. That's when the idea presented itself to me. That afternoon, I went to a local sporting goods store and bought an assortment of wrestling headgear and shoes and sent them anonymously to that inner city church. On Christmas Eve, I placed an envelope on the tree, the note inside telling Mike what I had done and that this was his gift from me. His smile was the brightest thing about Christmas and in the succeeding years. For each Christmas, I followed that tradition. One year, sending a group of mentally handicapped youngsters to a hockey game. Another year, a check to a pair of elderly brothers whose home had burnt to the ground the week before Christmas, and on and on and on. The envelope became the highlight of Christmas. It was always the last thing opened on Christmas morning. As the children grew, the toys gave way to more practical presents but the envelope never lost its allure. And the story doesn't end there. You see, we lost Mike last year due to cancer. When Christmas rolled around, I was so wrapped up in grief that I barely got the tree up. But Christmas Eve found me placing an envelope on the tree. And in the morning, it was joined by three more. Each of our children, unbeknownst to the others, had placed an envelope on the tree for dad. May Mike's spirit of giving like the Christmas spirit, always be with us. When we give of our love, and when we give of our heart, and when we give of what is valuable, truly valuable to us, then Christmas is deep and meaningful and lovely and wonderful and not exhausting. Ernest Holmes, the founder of this philosophy, says, if we have to make a choice and we feel we do not know which or what to choose, we must be still in our consciousness and know that the spirit within us knows which of these ways is the right and most constructive way and will guide us. But it takes getting quiet. And it takes listening from within. It takes listening from our wholeness. It takes listening from our enoughness. It takes listening from the place of oneness where we are truly already connected with those people that we love and connected with the whole of things and connected with that infinite love of the universe, the love that we are. It takes turning within and connecting with that greater part of you and then letting your choices come from there. And so Ray told me a story this week. You know, he goes for a walk every single morning and talks to people while he's on his walk all over the place. And one of the men that he ran into this week told him that he was pulling into a gas station and he noticed that there was a woman who was trying to push her car towards the gas pump. He says, having considered myself a good Samaritan, I parked and joined her in pushing her car. What are you doing, she asked. I'm giving you a hand, I said. What are you doing? She replied, I'm stretching before my run. <laughs> Bringing the gift of ourselves and our light and our love is the greatest gift we can bring and the greatest gift that we can give anybody and that we can give ourselves in return. And when we give that gift of our light and our love, sharing that blesses others. Then our holidays feel rich and satisfying. 
So how do you do that? I think first you stop and you commune with that fullness of the divine that is already within you. But you have to stop and really feel that within you. Stop and turn within until you touch that place of wholeness and you feel whole and you feel at peace and you feel centered. And then when you get to that place of feeling centered and whole and enough and connected, then you ask yourself, what is really important here? What is really important for me to do? What is really important to my spirit? And be inner directed. But you have to come from the place of wholeness first, because when you're coming from not enough, then you think you have to do all these things in the world and buy all these things and get all these things done. But when you're coming from your own wholeness and your own enoughness and your own connection with life and all that is, then you make different choices. And then once you get to that place and you're inner directed, the second thing that you do in order to make the holidays satisfying and deeply satisfying and rich is to be fully present with whatever it is that you're doing. If you're shopping, if you're wrapping presents, if you're driving, if you're putting up the Christmas lights, whatever it is that you're doing, the potential for joy is in every single moment if you are present to the moment joy is not present when you are in your head and free, trying to figure out what the next three things are on your list and how you're going to get them done so bring your five senses into whatever it is that you're doing if you're christmas shopping listen to the christmas music that's playing be an appreciation of the amazing displays and all these things that there are to buy be in appreciation of the opulence that you have in your life that you can actually go shopping and buy these things. And if you're wrapping presents, look at the beautiful paper and the ribbon and all those things that you get to have. And listen to the Christmas music. And be with the gift that you bought and how much appreciation you have for the gift and how much you love it. And how much you love that you get to share that with someone in your life. And if you're baking, be present with the smells. And what it feels like to use your muscles in stirring that. And how nice it is to be home and to be in your own kitchen. I don't know about you, but I'm happy to be home and be in my own kitchen. It's really nice. But be present and feel the fullness of your spirit that is present with what you're doing and the fullness of your love with what you're doing. And so my invitation to you is to take time daily just to be still. Before you start your day, before you make your plans, before you decide everything that you're going to do, and be with your inner self. Get grounded in your own spirit. Get grounded in your own wholeness and your oneness with everything. Get grounded in that innate love that is always present, that is the very essence of who you are. And then ask yourself, once you get there, what do I really want to do? What do I really want to do? And then be present with whatever it is that you choose and be in the joy of it. Then you will be having one of your best Christmases ever. Then you will be at peace and full of love and blessing all those that you come in contact with as you move through this season. And so blessings to you at this Christmas season during these fabulous holidays and all that there is to do and blessings to you on this path of your own deepening and your own awakening and of sharing your spirit with this world. Blessings to all of you. Ray, why don't you come up here and pray with me today? I'm going to let you start.
I'll go second. So just take this moment to turn within. Go deeper, they say. Go to that place where you really do feel the love for the people that are in your life daily. And open your heart. As we recognize the one divine life, the ever presence, the existence of all intelligence, all wisdom, of all knowledge, the ever givingness, the abundance. the joy and our relationship to it as we open ourselves more and more by allowing it to move into and through and around us. We recognize that we touch every life as every life touches us but there truly is only one life. And I simply declare that and pass this prayer. Oh, and so what a blessing it is just to be in this place of remembering, in this place of truth that yes, indeed, we are fully immersed in this infinite one, this infinite presence of love and of light and of truth, that this is the presence that we live and move and have our beingness within. And it is this one that is unfolding itself in us and through us as this path that we walk, as all that is before us, and as the gift of ourselves that we bring to life. For that gift of ourself is none other than that presence unfolding through us. What a blessing it is to consciously participate in this. What a blessing it is to say yes to the call of our own spirit, to this call of life and this call of oneness. And so I know that today, as we move forward into this holiday season, we take a new awareness with us, an awareness that we are the gift, that it is our light and our love and our connection and our oneness with the divine that is the gift that we bring everywhere we go. And so today that gift is magnified. It is, moves out from us and goes before us and moves out into the world, what a blessing it is just to participate in this unfolding of spirit. And so I recognize and know right now that our holidays are already blessed and that we are a blessing everywhere we go. And today, as we choose to be inner directed, we become a blessing to ourselves and to our own life. And so it is with gratitude that I release this prayer into that infinite law of the universe, knowing that this prayer has already been taken hold of and it is unfolding by means of that infinite power of the universe. And so I release this prayer and I say thank you. And so it is. So it is. Nice.